So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Douglas Ross metaphorically wetting himself here, trying to defend Boris Johnson, despite calling for Boris Johnson res- resignation in the past for, uh, you know, kind of misleading the House and um, lying about the parties and all this stuff. Um, you know, he's very, you know, gave him credit for it. Um, and um, yeah, you know, um, he's kind of had to go around the classic defense of, oh, there's a war going on, we can't change prime minister. Um, which is just a ridiculous argument from a ridiculous man. But um, and he's, let's watch this video. He looks very uncomfortable as is. And we have actually who seems to be probably one of the better Sky News presenters. I have to give her a lot of credit, even though I still can't find a goddamn name. But um, yeah, whoever she is, a lot of credit to her. Calls for him to resign. Not only has he been found to break the law, but in subsequent speeches to Parliament and, and talking to the public via media outlets like Sky News, he repeatedly denied rules were broken. Uh, and, you know, your viewers will know, I, I previously called for the Prime Minister uh, to step down. It was at the time when we found out that these birthday parties were uh, ha- had happened and that came to light. So he did the right thing by calling for the Prime Minister re- to resign, but he backtracks on it really aggressively. Uh, but since then, we have seen something that I never thought I would see in my lifetime another war uh, in Europe. I mean, I've had tweets from people saying, for goodness sake, we changed the Prime Minister during World War II. You can't just keep a Prime Minister who has lied to the public and to Parliament, who has broken the law because there is war in Europe. I mean, OK, that, the, the argument he uses is stupid. Um, we have changed Prime Ministers during wars we were actually directly involved in. Um, so it's a ridiculous argument. but. You know, I would ask him. Okay, once you know the war in Ukraine has ended, um, are you gonna are you gonna call for Boris Johnson's resignation again? Are the, should the are the Tories gonna do that? Um, because after that, you don't have any more excuses really, unless you're gonna make the time argument of it happened ages ago. Well, you will know that when there was a previous change during world wars that the rules for changing a leader were quite different and it could be done just by MPs alone. Now it's a process that goes out to party members and takes several months. However, I was also saying there that um, the leadership uh, has been welcomed by President Zelensky. If President Zelensky wants support from the UK, he will deal with whoever is presented to him. It's not because he's mates with Boris Johnson. That's absolutely true, and you know, ba- you know, I don't think any other Tory um, MP, at least from the front bench like Truss or Sunak, would change policy on this. Not really. I think Sunak might, um, but I don't think Liz Truss would. So again, you know, Zelensky will deal with whoever's there, and he will do his best to get whatever he needs from them. So it's a ridiculous argument from himself again. And if he truly, if he did care about the people of Ukraine, right? Why are we being so? Um, why are we being so annoying with refugee places, amongst other things? You know, why are we causing problems for refugees from Ukraine to come to the UK? Riddle me that, big boy. Well, it's nothing about being mates. He has seen that the Prime Minister and the UK government have delivered where other governments in other parts of Europe and across the world have not. Do you want him to lead you into the next election? Well, I'm not getting into any hypotheticals. Well, there will be another general election. There will be another general election at some point. We don't know when. Do you want Boris Johnson to lead the Conservatives in that? Again, again, you know, it's really questioning because, you know, she's saying, okay, for now, you know, you keep your boy because of this this situation you've kind of imagined in your head about, you know, can't change Prime Minister now and all this nonsense, right? But once it's over, you know, once it's 2024, are you going to back Boris Johnson? Again, you know, she's pretty good at her job. You have to give a lot of credit for it because the standard of journalism and interviewing in this country is so damn bad. And and what I'm saying is, at the moment, when we are dealing with this ongoing crisis, the focus has to be on that. The first sitting Prime Minister to be punished for breaking the law. You would be happy for him to lead the Conservatives to the next general election? Ben. I'm saying it's right that he remains in post while this war is ongoing and we need to provide support to President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine. Okay. So I I would have said there, then fine, once this is over, once, you know, the Russian invasion of Ukraine is over, you're going to immediately call for Boris Johnson's resignation. That's what I would have said to him. Does the Chancellor have your backing? It cuts off here. Um, I think he's going to say something similar. Um, but the simple fact is this man's absolutely wet himself with the worst kind of response he has. I don't know if he's gotten a battering from um, CCHQ or whatever, but, you know, he was insulted by uh, Rhys Mogg, the Brexit Opportunities Minister, for um, calling him a lightweight. And to be fair, he is because he should have stuck by this. 
he would have stuck he should have stuck by this and I can see people in Scotland might be turned off by his kind of baby kind of attitude of oh you know there's a war going on we're not involved in so we have to uh, keep him in place you know I don't think that's going to be seen favorably uh, in in Scotland um, I don't know how angry Scottish conservatives are about the uh, the party stuff. Um, they might vote for um, they might vote against the SNP just because of the um, the increased restrictions in Scotland. Um, there are mask mandates still and things like that. They might vote conservative to try and get rid of them. But that aside, I, I genuinely don't know why you'd vote for this clown because he is a political lightweight. You know, unfortunately, I have to agree with Rhys Mogg. Um, he should be still calling for Boris Johnson's resignation. There are Tory MPs calling for Boris Johnson's resignation, despite the situation in Ukraine, because at the end of the day, um, you know, the UK doesn't have a massive bearing on the ending, whatever happens in Ukraine. We really don't. You know, yes, we, arming Ukraine is very important, but we're doing very little to help refugees. If the UK stops arms to um, Ukraine, it'd be um, disastrous, I think, for them. But I hope at that point other countries do kind of pick up the slack. We've seen um, the Czech Republic start giving tanks to the Ukrainian army. We're not doing that. So the other countries are doing their part to help out. The American government are giving javelins, which are, I think, from what I've heard, some of the best anti-tank missiles you can get. Ours don't compare. So you know, to argue we're doing the best and whatever is simply untrue. But um, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. It's enough embarrassment of Douglas Ross. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and um, yeah, hopefully support the channel on Patreon if you can, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.